Today I'm going to show you some mark making techniques for getting past this blank page. Because let's face it, right now you have enough to be anxious about besides being intimidated by this. Let's start with a teacup or a coffee cup. This is one that I use that is dedicated only to mark making and that's why it's kind of messy. It doesn't have to be a teacup. This is, you could use a baby jam jar, makeup jars, makeup lids, improvise. Let me show you first how to make some marks using some of my handmade walnut ink. It's in this mister and I am gonna spritz this guy up like this. Now I'm going to just dab it a little bit because walnut ink makes a lot of itself. It's very dramatic and a little dab will do you. But you can see how that is pretty cool. It looks as though you put your coffee cup or teacup down while you were working. Another thing that you can do if you want something more dramatic than just random thingies is to make a lot of a lot of these little circles. Now I'm going to show you some gesso on this tea dyed paper. So it'll show up. And here we're just going to make lots and lots. And when that dries, now you can start working into that. Again, it doesn't have to be ink or gesso. You can use water colors. You can use acrylic inks, watered acrylics. Use what you have. But let me show you this one, which is gesso, and I've mixed in some blue fountain pen ink. I love this because it actually goes onto the page like a chalk paint. And it has this kind of a glow to it that's hard to explain unless you're here looking at it. But it is a cheap and very easy way to start your page off with some marks. While I've got my gesso out, let's look at another technique using a bank card or uh, any other flat scraper surface. I'm gonna take your gesso or some other medium and load your card up a little bit like this. And then you can scrape it, pounce it, bounce it, make some marks through there. And that's gonna be, again, a really nice basic mark making that you can work into. Now let's look at blots, splotches. I have loaded up a, an ink dropper or a pipette with some watered ink. Again, it doesn't have to be ink. And I am gonna just make some little marks here on the page. I'm going to blow them around a little bit. So I just blew them. You can use a straw or just blow. And now gently close it, blot it, and open it up. And we're gonna Keep moving that around a little bit. Now this is going to dry a little bit lighter and when it's done you can draw into this. For instance you might want to make this some butterfly wings, some flowers, some clouds, part of a sky. So you can take inspiration by what turns up randomly. Alternatively you can also use it to psychoanalyze your friends. Let's look at stencils. Normally when we use stencils in our mixed media work, we want a very crisp, defined image. But for mark making, I suggest something looser and more fun and less scary. This, these are some pages that I've done previously 
actually preparing this and it's where I've used stencils with an ink and water mix. Here's another one and you can see it is very messy indeed. So I have permission to work into this, draw around it and just make something completely new out of it. Let me show you how to do it. You can take this stencil and this is a mister. It's got ink and water mixed into it. And you can see it's just going to be messy, loose, but when it dries, it will have a kind of a mystery to it. So there's some mark making with stencils. While I have my mister out, let's look at another way of using that similar to blotches you just want to and you could let that dry right there and that's going to be your mark or you can blot it and get a little bit more coverage and depth and if you want repeat and get a little bit of layer going on before I move on to the next technique, I found this page and I thought I'd show you how the loosey goosey stencil work looks with some color to it. I know I tend to work with a sepia palette, but some of you may prefer some color. And it still looks really good and allows you to work into it or around it. Let's look at something with a tea dye. Now, a lot of you are familiar with tea dyeing your own papers to bind into your journals or use in your mixed media work. This is a little bit different though than soaking the papers in tea or coffee because you're going to drizzle. Okay, so a lot like the ink making because then you want to just use a little bit. Blot well and now Again, with your coffee or your tea, you're going to have some abstract things that you can work into or around. And let's see, I want to show you a couple that have dried because it's, it's actually going to dry lighter than this. So these are some pages that just had the drizzled tea. And now you can use these to work on. I've put down some grease proof paper because this next technique is messy, but super effective. And it's just making drips across the top of your page. I have some ink and water here, and I also have another mister just with water because you might need that. I'll show you now. I'm going to just kind of spray along the top here. It doesn't have to be perfect. And already it's going to want to drip a little bit. But you see it is a little bit viscous. So I'm going to add this just plain water in the mister. And now when I tilt it down, the ink wants to travel across the page. which means that you have, again, very dramatic, very bold, abstract mark to start your page with. Two final techniques. This is one where I have added just plain old masking tape across the page, sort of randomly, kind of. And you can paint over this, you can stamp over it. I'm going to go ahead and use up this ink and gesso a little bit. Because that's about it on the gesso 
I'm going to add a little bit, no big surprise here, of ink. Okay, let's just peel these off. And now you have a really easy, very cool background to work in. Finally, who doesn't love bubble wrap? It's one of my favorite cheap art supplies. So I'm just going to take a smidgen of a little piece of it. And you can use ink, a stamp pad, watercolors. Let's just ink this up. and bounce it a little bit. And there you go. That's it for today, but it went by pretty fast. If you would like to go a little slower, please subscribe to my newsletter. And this coming Sunday, you will get a free written step-by-step -step instruction post to show you how to do this. If you've missed that newsletter, then please check below here in YouTube and I will have a link to it on my blog. If you like this, please subscribe to my channel and please give me a like and a comment. I'm really grateful. Now, get up and go make something.